Okay, ladies and gentlemen, mistakes. Ugh, where do I even begin? Made so many mistakes in my life, but of course, we're not going to talk about those other mistakes. In this one, I'm going to talk about the GCSEs and A-level mistakes that I made during revision time. Now, just so that you guys understand, and I want you guys to understand where I'm going to where I'm coming from is. I could very easily tell you guys my successes in terms of, okay, I've got 98%, 99%, A stars here, A stars here, A, A, etc. But you're not going to learn anything. And I think this is why this video is very important. It's better that you learn from someone's mistake than the successes because success comes from mistakes. You cannot have success without mistake. You have to make the mistake to make the success. You can learn a lot from someone's failures, I guess in this case, my failures, than just my successes, right? Because what is 98% going to do to you guys? Oh, I got A star. What is that going to do to you? Oh, Vidush has got A star. It's not going to do anything, right? But if I tell you my mistakes, oh shoot, he made a mistake here. Okay, I've got to make sure I don't do that. That's what's going to help you. I've written a list of the mistakes I've had and I realized, bloody hell, I've done so many mistakes. So I'm just going to literally give you the main ones because I think this video is going to be way too long. And obviously, if you want to know more of the other mistakes, just put it down in the comments and I'll I'll let you guys know. So the first one, first, first one, which was such a, was not starting early enough. The first mistake was not starting early enough. I wish I started early enough because it would have saved me a lot of stress. Like when you're trying to revise with time being very limited, there's a lot of pressure that comes to you. There's a lot of, oh my gosh, I've got to get all this done in such limited time. And then, then you realize I do not have enough time to take all this in, cram all this in. And I wish that I started a lot earlier, prioritized, organized, because as the time came nearer to the exam, I would have been less stressed, less pressured, and it would have just have been a bit more easier glide through. So that was the first one. The second one was not focusing on my weakest topics enough. I was focusing too much on my strongest subjects. For example, with maths, I was focusing a lot on maths. And it didn't, it, it was a waste of time. And I'll, let me elaborate. Because I knew when I was doing the maths questions and I was practicing the maths questions, I I understood what I was doing. I knew how to answer the question. So once you understand something and you know how to answer the question and you're able to pretty much get, you know, 19 over 95%, there's no really much point in doing much more work in it or putting so much time in it because you understand it, you're wasting your time. Now, the reason why I did it, and maybe you guys can relate here is, when I was getting the questions right and I was marking the exam questions, I was like, oh yeah, 95%, whatever. It made me feel good. But that made me feel good factor was delusional. And the reason why it was delusional is you're making yourself feel good on something that you already know. You've learned it. You've mastered it. Why are you wasting your time on it? You should be going to the next thing. So I kind of, I, I did, well, actually, I did figure that out eventually. And this is the problem because I was quite self-aware at that time. I was able to see, hold up, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this when I know it? It's a waste of my time. So I was able to see after a while that, okay, I don't need to spend so much time on that subject. And I should be focusing more on like the biology, the chemistry, the geography, the ones that I struggle with. But because obviously when you struggle on a subject, you don't really, it's not something that you really want to do, if that makes sense, right? When you like something, when you like doing something and you're good at it, you want to do more of that, right? It's a natural human instinct. And when you're bad at something or you're pretty rubbish at it, you just, tend to not spend so much time. So I think that was one, that was the second mistake that I did was not spending so much time on my weak subjects. And I would say to you guys that don't spend too much time on it. You're wasting your time. You know the subject, you're very good at it, okay? And then you're confident. Trust me, you will be fine. Spend more time on the weaker subjects. It is uncomfortable. I get it, I understand, I felt it. It's uncomfortable doing something that you don't like and you're not good at it. But the only way you can become good at it is to start and to practice. That's what I would say to you guys. The third one was, let me check. Oh my days, yeah, this one. Pfft, ugh, that's a big mistake. So the third one was memorizing the exam answers when doing exam questions. Let me explain, right? You've probably done this as well. You know, when you're answering exam questions, whether it's biology, like especially the theoretical subjects, right? Sometimes when you see the questions and you repeat the exam papers, you automatically memorize the answers. And the biggest mistake I did, and I realized this as well, after probably doing maybe 15 papers of practice, I started realizing, hold up, hold up, hold up. When I was doing the exam papers, I was memorizing the answers from the marking scheme, okay? As in like literally memorizing the answers from the marking scheme because I did the questions again and again and again. And yet, to a certain extent, that might be okay if the questions are similar. 
But the problem happens when if the exam question in the exam is completely different to what you've learned, you are screwed. And that's when I thought, hold on, am I actually doing the question using my brain or am I actually memorizing the answers from previous practice questions? And that's the thing you have to distinguish. You've got to be very careful because your brain can trick you or you thinking that, oh, you know how to answer the exam question because you're memorizing it from previous exam questions or previous model answers. But you've got to be careful where if the exam question comes differently, are you able to understand the question and process it and think about it and for you to answer the question. You've got to ask yourself the question, are you memorizing the answers when you're doing the exam questions or are you actually thinking and using your brain to figure out the answer? And if you realize you're memorizing it, what you should be doing is trying to find different exam questions that ask the questions in a different way. That's the best way to get you guys to think. Because if you've seen a question before that's exactly the same or similar, your, your, memory, your memory is going to come. You're not even going to use your brain. You're just going to mem like literally bang what you remembered. You're going to write it down. So that's you've got to just be aware of that. That's what I would say. Now, the other one, which one is this? Uh, yeah, not paying attention in class. Oh, my days. Yeah. I mean, if you see my TikToks, you probably see I was an absolutely lazy person when it came to school. And I think I wish I did pay more attention in class because if I would actually understood even maybe 20 minutes of that class, it would have been effective in my understanding of the topic and I didn't have to put so much emphasis and time when revising. Because listen, when you're revising something, you also have to understand the topic that you're revising, right? Because I wasn't paying so much attention in class, I didn't really understand the topic, which meant that I had to start from scratch, like trying to understand the topic from scratch and revise and make notes based on that. But if I'd actually paid attention, even to, you don't, it's difficult to pay attention for the whole class. I get it because you guys literally like you have lesson after lesson after lesson. But even if you couldn't take 20 minutes from those classes, it will reap dividends because when you're revising, you'll be able to recall, oh, okay, that's what Miss said. That's what Sir meant by this. It just makes the whole revision a lot more faster and a lot more efficient. So yeah, I wish I did pay more attention in class, but hey, it is what it is. The other mistake I made, and this is more personally to me, so it's maybe you guys don't have this issue, but I'll tell you why I had this problem, was not asking for help when I needed help. I think there's a lot of benefit when you're struggling to ask for help because it, it does it does a couple of things. The first thing it does is it doesn't make you feel like you are alone in this, that you have people there to help you. So if it's topics or things that you struggle with, you should ask for help. I didn't, and I'll, I'll explain to you why I didn't. That will help you to be like, okay, there's someone here that's able to support me in something that I don't understand. Okay, I can get that help, and then I can carry on with my revision. But at the same time as well, it doesn't make you feel like you're alone in this. Because the worst feeling that you can have is, you're feeling under pressure, you're feeling stressed, you feel anxiety coming, and at the same time you feel lonely because you don't feel like you're getting any help or, oh my gosh, I'm just doing this all by myself. And you don't want that. So obviously, maybe you guys are not, you, you, it doesn't apply to you guys because you're probably asking for help. But yeah, when you're struggling with something, do ask for help, don't suffer in silence. Now, the reason why I didn't ask for help is, I'm a bit egotistical, a bit of pride there, because for me, it's like, no, I'm going to do this by myself. I'm going to figure it out. And yes, I did figure it out in the end, but I'm pretty, pretty 100%, 99.99% sure that if I had asked for help, I would have figured it out a lot quicker because I had a bit too much pride and ego saying, no, I'm not going to ask for help. I'm going to do this by myself. I'm going to stand up on my own two feet. Yeah, I could have saved quite a lot of time if I just, listen, I don't understand this. Can you just show me the way of how to do this? Or can you give me some tips on this and that? So yeah, I don't think you guys are like that, but put it down in the comments. Listen, I'll be very, very interested to see like what you guys think of these mistakes and mistakes that you guys are currently doing or anything that you feel you can change. Just put it down in the comments. I will reply back to you guys. But yeah, ask for help when you need help and then you can just move on to the next thing. The last one is not choosing the right environment to study. I used to work in the library, so learn, revise, etc. in the library. But the thing with the library was because there's so many people coming and going, it was such a distraction for me. And then I realized that I can actually study at home if I find the right time when there's no distraction. So for you guys, when you're studying, you want to try and study in a place where it's very quiet. Don't have any distractions. Take your phone away. No social media, no phone. Because when you have these distractions, man, it's 
It's very difficult to concentrate. You want to know that you've got quality revision in, even if it's two hours, even if it's three hours, or even if it's a one hour. But in that period of time, your brain is only focused on the task at hand, nothing else. Because think about it, right? You're studying, you're revising, you're doing a topic, and then your phone, your bell notification rings, uh, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever, Insta. What are you going to do? You're probably going to look at it. It's a distraction because that's the thing about these social media things is it's a distraction for us for us to go in and by the time you go in and get out now you have to start again to be okay where was I and it could be very exhausting because now you have to use a bit of your willpower to go back into that deep mode work so I would say just completely take distractions off phones friends and the environment that you're in you want to be in an environment where it's literally just you and deep work now of course if you are working with other people that's a different matter because you guys are working together to revise that's different but if you want to work by yourself you want to be in a complete deep state of work. No distractions at all, no noise. If you want to put music, put music if it helps you to concentrate. These are things that you can do just to make things a bit more efficient in how you revise. So these are the mistakes that I've made. Now I have a lot more mistakes there, but I thought these are the ones that are more important that could be more beneficial to you guys. And just put down in the comments what you guys want to see, what kind of content you want, things that can help you guys out. I'll be more than happy to do this. One thing I would say before I leave is, listen, we all make mistakes. You guys are probably making mistakes as well as we speak. And some of you might even feel the pressure and they're like, oh my gosh, I messed up. Please, let me just say this to you guys. You have not messed up. We all, like I've made more than thousand mistakes in my life. And if I kind of looked at every single mistake, boy, I would not even be here to speak to you guys. I would be a complete mental mess. Mistakes is fine. It's part of the learning process. Don't be hard on yourself. Take it one step at a time. If you made a mistake, completely forget about it, learn from it, and then start fresh again. That's the best thing that you can do. Just accept you made the mistake and move on. That's life. Trust me, when you finish GCSE A-levels and you go into university and after university, you're gonna make so many mistakes. You're gonna come up with so many challenges in life, right? And that's why I have this personal YouTube channel, Vidouche, on the side that I put all these videos out there for you guys as well when you grow into that as well because these are things that I've made. These are more real life stuff there on that channel that would definitely benefit you as you get into those uh, stages of your life. So trust me, don't worry about this. Take it one step at a time and put it down in the comments, things that you need advice on, help on. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, take care guys. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.